Hey guys, MC on Mike here. January was probably the best part of 2020 for me, and not because of the COVID-19 situation being non-existent at the time. After getting together the money I got for Christmas in 2019, I went shopping at my local game shop. Going into that store, I knew exactly what I wanted to get, and that was a PlayStation 4. For a while, I wanted to delve into the world of PlayStation, but never really had a good reason to, as I felt like there weren't that many games that appealed to me. It wasn't until Joker was announced for DLC in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate at the 2018 Game Awards that I knew I wanted to give the Persona series a chance. I ended up walking out of that GameStop with a used PS4 Slim, a copy of the original Persona 5, and a few other games as there were a few titles I had been wanting to try, or were recommended by friends. And I still haven't played half of those. <laughs> From the moment I turned on my PS4 and saw that incredible opening cinematic for Persona 5, I knew I was in for something special. Something unlike anything I had ever played. Little did I know that the next collective 85 hours over the course of a month while in college would change my life and it would make my roommate question my tastes in games. Now let me clear something up. I knew Royal was on the way when I bought my PS4. Why didn't I just wait for Royal to come out, you might ask? Well, there were a few reasons. Firstly, I wanted to have experienced the original Persona 5 before jumping into Royal, as I understood there were quite a few differences between Vanilla P5 and Royal since it was the definitive version. Secondly, which goes hand in hand with the first reason, I wanted to compare both the original and Royal to see how different they truly are. And third, my heart was already dead set on buying a PS4, so I figured dropping $10 on a used copy of Persona 5 wouldn't be that much of a big deal in terms of expense on top of the PS4's price. Without giving too much away, I'd say this game is incredible in every aspect. From the music, to the easy-to-learn gameplay, to the incredible storytelling, there is nothing in this game that I don't love. However, that won't stop me from analyzing the hell out of it. Keep in mind that there are going to be major story spoilers for Persona 5 Royal. If you'd like to remain spoiler-free, I'd recommend playing the game, since I'll be talking about the story a bit. Without further delay, let me tell you what I think about Persona 5 Royal. Persona 5 Royal's gameplay is based entirely around the namesake, Personas. Personas are defined in the dictionary as a physical manifestation of one's soul, and this is represented very well given the theme of the game. The main character's persona, Arsene, for example, is reminiscent of the fictional character Arsene Lupin. Lupin was referred to as a gentleman thief, and this is fitting as the group of protagonists refer to themselves as the Phantom Thieves. Random facts aside, Personas in this game have powers with different elemental types, as well as enhanceable stats to make them more powerful for the user. There's definitely an abundance of Personas in the game, as Royal has a total of 261 Personas, counting DLC and character-exclusive Personas. I know DLC is a big hit and miss in the game's industry, but don't panic. Almost all the DLC is free to download if you have Persona 5 save data on your PS4 system. With the exception of a few Personas in the paid DLC, the list is on screen right now. DLC aside, the gameplay is simple, but definitely makes you think on your feet. It takes on the traditional turn-based combat system many of us are used to, and most enemies you come across have a weakness to either an elemental attack, physical attack, or gun attack. With fast-paced but simplistic combat, battles can be done in no time compared to other games like Pokemon, where battles take quite a bit longer, especially when you compare gameplay side by side. Unlike Pokemon, however, there are way fewer types, so you can easily keep track of type effectiveness. You have a staple element types such as fire, ice, and thunder, but occasionally you have wind, psychic, nuclear, bless, and curse. There's also the almighty type, which is non-elemental damage, meaning no enemies have a weakness nor a resistance to it. New in Royal are Showtime attacks. These are combination attacks which deal a huge amount of damage to an enemy. While this does sound amazing, be careful of when you use it, as you only get one per battle. 
Even in combat, you may not always have a Showtime attack available. Showtimes can only be available when one of the following conditions are met in battle. A party member obtains a baton pass, a party member loses half their health or more, an enemy is critically injured, or an enemy is afflicted with a status ailment. There's only 8 Showtime attacks in the game, but they all have their own individual charm. My favorite has to be Morgana and Ons. Something about On pulling two shotguns out of a bouquet of roses and blasting the enemy is just amusing to me. You don't get access to these right from the get-go, however. You actually unlock these special attacks throughout the story, which is good, because you're not necessarily overpowered at the start of the game. Now, when it comes to battles, you could of course walk up to an enemy and battle, but where's the fun in that? In Persona 5, you can actually use stealth tactics to sneak up on enemies and get a first strike. While other Persona games suggested you walk behind the enemy, Persona 5 takes it a step further and allows you to hide behind different objects. Be careful though, because if an enemy sees you, it may not end well. I think this stealth mechanic is a really cool idea, and adds a new layer of strategy when taking on dungeons. Maybe you want to defeat all the enemies to make the dungeon easier? You can do that! Would you rather conserve your SP for the big fights? Well, you could do that too. New to Royal is the grappling hook. With the press of a button, you could practically fly across a room. Oftentimes, the locations that let you use the grappling hook will lead you to the new Will Seeds. These will restore a little bit of HP and SP, and collecting all three gives you a really useful gear. Be warned though, as the third Will Seed is always guarded by a tough enemy. But believe me when I say that the gears you get are incredibly worth your time. I talked a lot about the combat so far, so what about the rest of the game? You know, the parts where you're not fighting demons that sit on toilets or being the daylight out of a cognitive manifestation of a pedophilic teacher. Yes, that that's a real concept I mentioned. Did I mention this game has some mature thieves? Because it does. Outside of battling, you have a social life to keep up with. You're a high school transfer student who's currently an outcast due to your falsified assault record, so I'd say it's the perfect time to make some friends. Social links, or confidants, are vital to your duties as a phantom thief. Leveling up confidants with your party members will make them a lot more helpful in battle, and they can even be more powerful if you max them out. Other social links that aren't party members give you buffs, like discounts on healing items, gun customizations that power up your gun skills, or backgrounds from a maid who's also your homeroom teacher. One of these is not like the other. Besides social connections, you have social stats. Sometimes when talking to a confidant, you may need a certain social stat to be a certain level to choose a particular text option. Fortunately, there's opportunities to level up social stats everywhere. You can get a job at the local convenience store, swing at the batting cages, or even somehow gain knowledge by sleeping in class. Don't ask me how that works. On the subject of confidants, Kasumi is one of the new ones added in Royal. Kasumi is a gymnast, aiming to be at an Olympic level. She befriends the protagonist fairly quickly as they run into each other a few times coincidentally. In battle, she generally specializes in critical hit attacks while also being equipped with some bless attacks. I will say, while I love the personality that Kasumi brings to the game, I feel that she was effortlessly thrown into the main story as most of her character really comes through at the end of the game in the new third trimester. I'm not saying Atlas should have rewritten the entire plot to fit her in better, but it just seems like her inclusion was rushed almost last minute. I won't get into the new characters too much, but I will mention Jose. Jose is a small... person? Child? Um... Jose is a small... living being that frequents mementos. In Vanilla Persona 5, Mementos was just a series of randomly generated floors with enemies that had an insufferable 10 second loop for background music. With the addition of Jose, you can upgrade Mementos in a few aspects. By collecting stamps, which are randomly hidden on each floor, you can make it so you get more experience from battles or money. Or you can get more materials when you pick them up, which means you could sell more materials for even more money. This can be really helpful for getting millions of yen really fast, which gives you more freedom to fuse personas around that might cost a pretty penny to work with. With the release of Royal, there were plenty of changes made to improve the overall gameplay experience. 
In the original P5, you had limited ammo every time you went into a palace. If you had 12 bullets in your gun, you only had 12 for the rest of the time you were in the palace. In Royal though, guns are reloaded after every single fight, which is just amazing. Now you can literally go in, guns blazing. It's almost a roguelike. Except things that make a roguelike a roguelike. <laughs> On the fusion side of things, there's also a few fixes and features that make personas all the more fun to fuse together. Every persona now has traits, a special skill that can affect many different variables. Some traits can make skills cost less SP to use, some increase the likelihood of inflicting status ailments, and some boost your damage output. It adds a new layer of decision making when fusing personas together since on top of having the moveset you want, you also want to look out for a trait that you can take advantage of. This gives the player a bigger offensive edge in battle. Besides that, there's also smaller gameplay modifications like Baton Pass no longer being locked behind certain confidant level, among other fixes. Oh, I almost forgot. You can do a lot more activities at night outside of LeBlanc now, as you were very restricted in the evening hours in Vanilla P5. Who's the one sleeping now? F you, Morgana! I'm sorry, I just- I, I needed to get that out of my system. The story in Persona 5 Royal is almost exactly the same as the original Persona 5. That's not necessarily a bad thing either. The plot is decent and the characters have plenty of development. Mostly. Sorry, Haru. What Royal adds in is a third semester which adds Maruki's palace and his story arc. It's nice that we get to see Maruki and Sumire's characters develop. However, I'm not too big on how they handled the rest of the plot. As I mentioned before, there were scenes with Kasumi sprinkled in the story in Royal. These aren't necessarily bad in and of themselves, but it doesn't really add to the established plot at all. It just feels like they threw in some small scenes to the original game's story and called it a day. You don't really get to understand or really know Sumire slash Kasumi's situation until the third semester anyway. So these scenes are practically pointless. It almost seems like an excuse to make a trailer featuring Kasumi saying, Hey, she's at this point in the game. Moreover, you can only get to rank 5 with Kasumi in the base game, and you have to wait until the third semester starts to progress that confidant further. That's just reinforcing my point that her character development in the early parts of Royal's plot was kind of pointless. Also, you might have noticed me using Sumire and Kasumi's names interchangeably. Well, plot twist, who we knew as Kasumi originally is actually her younger sister Sumire. The actual Kasumi died right in front of her, and Sumire disguised herself as Kasumi because she was manipulated by Maruki to do so, thinking it would help her cope with the tragedy that just happened. That's really f***ing dark. But at the same time, that's an impressive backstory. Not impressive like murder is impressive. Murder is not impressive. Don't put that on your resume. I learned that the hard way. The world design in Persona 5 and Persona 5 Royal is incredible. In previous entries, you traveled around smaller and more rural areas in Japan, like Persona 4's setting in Inaba. Meanwhile, Persona 5 throws you right into the massive metropolis of Tokyo. The sheer size of the world in Persona 5 gives you a wealth of options of what to do. You start off in Yongin Jaya, based off the Setagaya Ward in Real Life Japan. However, the game quickly opens up more areas for you to explore like Shibuya and Shinjuku's Red Light District. On the flip side, the palaces are very intricate. It's clear the design team took the time to make sure each palace had the following. Elaborate design that accurately reflects the palace ruler's cognition, added challenge in enemy placement, and puzzles that encourage exploration. As much as I want to go on forever about the palaces, I think you're better off seeing them for yourself in the game. They're all super cool to go through, and not a single palace made me want to turn off my PS4 out of frustration. A few years ago, I would have thought the idea of listening to video game music on its own was strange. However, Persona 5's incredible soundtrack is what propelled me into the world of video game music. Ever since playing through this game, I've had a growing appreciation for sound design in video games. Now onto the music itself. The music in the Persona series is famously composed by Shoji Meguro. 
Meguro's music spans multiple genres, including rock, jazz, and J-pop, which makes sense given the soundtracks in the past Persona games. Persona 5 in particular has been described as acid jazz by the community, which is described as a mix of jazz, soul, funk, and disco. It's also commonly referred to as club jazz. Definitions aside, the music is great. From the battle songs to the palace themes, everything is just composed so well. That said, there is one track that doesn't quite sit well with me. In Vanilla P5, the track for Mementos, as I mentioned before, is a constant 6 second loop. Thankfully, there's new tracks for the different layers of Mementos, but this didn't make the original any less repetitive sounding. Mementos aside, Royal's music is so well done. I'm probably using it as background music in this video because I'll take any chance I can get to show my love for Persona's music. The main aspect of combat is your Persona, a manifestation of your true self as I mentioned before. Every party member has a Persona that represents their other self. However, the protagonist has the power of the wild card, meaning we can have multiple Personas. Over time, you're able to hold more personas as you increase your social link with Igor throughout the main story. Eventually, you're able to hold up to 16 personas. Surely that's a lot to manage, so you're probably going to want to downsize a little bit. Look no further than Fusion, the main way to power up your personas. In the Velvet Room, you're able to combine two personas together to make a new, more powerful persona. This is a crucial part of the game, as you'll want to have strong personas throughout the game. <laughs> It's safe to say you'll have a large variety of personas to create, because as mentioned before, counting DLC, there's over 200. While the spectacle of having all those possibilities is great, there is one aspect that I think can be easily exploited. One of the ways you can fuse personas is through network fusion, where you fuse your personas with some other random players. This is just an easy way to get overpowered personas with minimal effort. And Honestly, there's no point in using it. I'm not saying it's cheating by any stretch of the imagination, but it takes away the fun of finding all the personas you need to make a strong one. Of course, we can't talk about this game without going over some other aspects that make this different from Vanilla P5. In addition to the new palace, the other palaces from Vanilla Persona 5 were also modified. While not big changes, some rooms were added to accommodate the will seeds I mentioned before, and other subtle changes include Monorame's fight being reworked to have more emphasis on elemental weaknesses. Yet the one thing they didn't fix was Okumura's palace being the worst thing to ever exist. I still have nightmares almost a year later! Aside from the story elements, there's a new city you can travel to called Kichijoji. This place offers more things to do to increase social stats, including visiting a jazz club and playing darts and 8-ball. Darts is especially useful because it powers up your baton pass with your party members, and that goes a long way in the game. Meanwhile, 8-Ball lets you hang out with multiple confidants, which is also fairly useful. One last major thing added is the Thieves' Den, a feature accessed through the in-game menu. Thieves' Den is described as where the protagonist's memories manifest, which is just fancy words for it, this is where all the in-game extras are. Yeah, this place, while it looks neat, it's just a small museum for in-game art, music, cutscenes, and promotional materials. However, not everything is available to you right away. You actually have to buy decor and gallery stuff with P tokens. How do you earn those? You have to complete various achievements throughout your playthrough. These achievements extend through every aspect of the game, including battles and social life. It's a neat idea for hosting all the gallery material in a physical, 3D rendered room, but I'm not exactly thrilled about having to earn P tokens. But that's just me. Personally, I think it'd be better if there was a uh, potential gateway to a gambling addiction. Oh yeah, there's Tycoon! Tycoon is a small card game you can play with your fellow fa phantom thieves in the thieves' den. And you can earn a few P tokens. It doesn't give nearly as high of a return as just completing some of the achievements outright, but it's a thing to do? Yeah! While Persona 5 Royal has become my favorite game of all time, I will admit the game has a few issues that are holding it back from being a 10 out of 10, in my opinion. I already talked about Kasumi's story arc being shoehorned in carelessly, so I won't go through that again here. 
one small detail that bothers me in the, is in the opening gameplay of the casino. In the following screenshot from Vanilla P5, you'll notice the characters are labeled as boyish voice among other monikers. Meanwhile, in this screenshot from Royal, it has silhouettes that let you see the character. This may not bother many people, but it certainly was something that annoyed me. This game just spoils the entire cast of characters in their Phantom Thief attire from this one prologue segment. All because somebody probably forgot to turn the inner shadow's opacity to 100% instead of 60. Maybe this doesn't bother you, and that's fine, but it bothers me now that you know what the future characters look like. If you're a new player, you already know who you're going to be encountering throughout the game. Persona 5 Royal is a wonderful JRPG. It has a story that occupies you for hours, and a combat system that's easy to learn and execute that also has an expansive selection of creatures to fuse together. I'd go as far as to say it's great for getting into the JRPG genre, as it's not intimidating in its gameplay. Persona 5 Royal doesn't exactly hold your hand in this game, but definitely doesn't leave you in the dust either. In case it wasn't abundantly clear, I highly recommend this game to anyone looking to either get into JRPGs for the first time, or anyone that just wants another really good game to play for over 100 hours. Thanks for watching my Persona 5 Royal review. I'm lucky the localization for Persona 5 Strikers was announced and actually released, so I guess this video has somewhat of a reason to come out like 10 months after I planned to make it. Yeah, that's the excuse I'm using for delaying the video for so long. Maybe next time when I do a game review, I'll actually make sure it comes out at a reasonable time. <laughs> Regardless, your support is appreciated. If you want to see more content from me, I recommend subscribing to the channel. No pressure, that subscribe button isn't going anywhere. If you want to talk about Persona 5 Royal and other things gaming, tune into my Twitch on Wednesdays and Fridays at 9.30pm Eastern Standard Time. Links to that and my other socials are in the description below. Now if you excuse me, I have to fight in the waifu wars with the Futaba stands.